let's get started. I'm going to bring my sister. This is very special because Diana and I haven't seen each other since she's moved back. She's now in Ojai, California, closer to home. And uh, we're going to be tuning into her kitchen. Hi, everyone. Diana, how are you doing? And this is this is your new life. It's beautiful. I'm excited to be here. It's my first time actually cooking from this kitchen. So it's kind of a big deal. Um, I have an outdoor kitchen that I've been working on and I'm really excited. Like I, Amazon home sent me all this really nice stuff. So like I'm yeah. getting to use it and break in this kitchen. So yeah, I'm really excited. I, I'm excited too. And you picked some really beautiful things and like, I, I just didn't know Amazon had. So for those of you who are interested in anything that you see, that's all on our class page. So, um, but Diana, what are we making today? Okay. So this is, a uh... Um, a really great recipe. It's kind of foolproof, I want to say, and Dawn and I'll talk more about it. But um, we're making a matcha wreath cake and it's gluten free. So we're going to be experimenting with gluten free flour today. And um, yeah, it's a very interchangeable recipe. And I think it's pretty foolproof. And if you've ever made like a banana bread or pound cake, this is kind of like, it's sort of the same thing, but baking it in a bunt pan is going to make it feel fancy. And then we're going to decorate it. So, yeah. Oh, I am excited for the decorating part because some of you um, might not know this, but Diana's a food stylist and she's a recipe developer and she has this beautiful book, um, but she has a, a really good eye and knows how to make your food look beautiful. So that is going to be a really fun part. We'll also dive into later. Um, so Diana, what's the first step to your recipe? Okay, so um, right now I had already started with a batter. Um, I'm gonna just give it a little whisk, but basically it has, um, you know, it's just your standard batter. It has, it has a lot of eggs, it has seven eggs in it. So that kind of keeps it really moist. Um, it has two and a quarter sticks of butter. Um, it has, you know, gluten-free flour like we talked about. And I want to specify, um, when you get gluten-free flour, there's going to be ones that say all-purpose gluten-free. And then there's going to be one that says cup for cup. So for this recipe, I really suggest using cup for cup if you've never used it because it already has xanthan gum and things that will mimic flour. So it's going to give it the elasticity and you won't have to have like buy another package of xanthan gum to like fudge around with it. So cup oh, for cup is great. Amazing. So that's like interchangeable because the first time I bought it, I saw, you know, I saw other gluten-free flours, but I was like, it didn't have, it just was the flour mix, but didn't actually have the xanthan gum. And that's going to give your cake structure. So I would definitely recommend any brand of cup for cup gluten-free flour for this. And um, what else does it have? It has also has yogurt, which I really love to add to my cakes. And it gives a little, like a really nice moist finish. And, um, you know, baking powder to help it rise, a bit of salt, a vanilla extract, almond extract, and um, it has matcha powder, of course. So mm -hmm. um, we skipped ahead. So we're gonna um, start with the batter itself. Great. Um, we have a base batter here. So the base batter, folks, um, you can get the recipe on Diana's web, I mean, on cherrybomb.com. And uh, we have all the ingredients listed there. So. I made this cake last night <laughs> and there were some tips to it that I was like, Diana, am I doing this right? So could you walk through a little bit about the batter and the consistency? Yes. So if you've forgotten to leave it everything out at room temperature, it's okay. It'll just look a little bit grainy and like it could even look like it's curdled, but as you add in the flour, it'll start to smooth out and even little bits and chunks in it, it really is totally okay. So I had that trouble last night and as soon as I started adding the flour, it totally smoothed. I'm like, oh, this looks like a normal batter. So it's, you know, we had talked about this typically cake recipes, you have to cream the sugar and butter together, right? But this one, you kind of just throw it all in and it, it's just one less step that you have to do. Yeah, it's definitely no fuss. And um, yeah, it's pretty, it's pretty straightforward. And Donna, can you admit something to the rest of the audience about what? About what? Your flour. So I got the cup for cup. You know, I went and looked for the cup for cup. I found it. And when I was making the recipe, I just, I just accidentally like just breached for my regular flour. So I'm like, and I stopped halfway. I'm like, wait, I bought special flour for this. So my cake isn't necessarily gluten free. It's like low gluten. 
It's a yeah. low gluten. <laughs> low gluten. So I've never heard of anyone doing that, but Donna called me last night and like, it looked great though. I mean, it totally turned out fine. So it's definitely a foolproof recipe. And totally. Yeah, I think yours turned out pretty good too. So um, yeah, we're going to start with the batter and then I'm going to show you guys how to add the matcha swirls into it. Um, so yeah, let me give it a stir real quick. Okay. Ricky, I don't know if I'm ready to show you my cake yet. I'm going to, I'm going to decorate with Diana later. So I will show it to you then. <laughs> okay. So we have the base batter here. And so what I like to do is, so in this recipe, you have a base batter and then you divide the batter in half and you're gonna mix matcha into half of the batter. So sometimes it's hard to eyeball when you have like a KitchenAid like full of batter. So what I like to do is I take a bowl and I, um, I put it on a scale. And you know, if you don't have a scale, obviously you can eyeball it, but this is, if you have a scale, why not you know, use it for this? So you set your scale to zero with your bowl on top. Which and by the way, I'm in love with my scale. I just purchased one and it's just been life-changing. I really want to get into baking and I realized I just didn't have all the tools to do it. So um, definitely, yeah, one of the things I think you need is a scale and you can get that on Amazon as well. So, so I'm putting all the batter into here and then I'm, so I'm weighing it as like the full batter and I have it on ounces, so. So this comes out to, about 46 in here. And the number, you, know, you can set it to anything, it doesn't really matter. So if you know that it's like what the total is, then you're just gonna divide it in half and pour half of it back in. So for me, I'm gonna be like, okay, um, so this says, you know, 46 ounces. So I'll do like 23 about, mm -hmm. and so you just start putting half of it back in. Is this how you did it last night, Donna, or? I did, yes. So yeah, you just start to put it back in and then you just kind of measure it back and be like, what was that half? Okay, so it was a little bit, put a little too much back in. All right. So when you're using matcha, is there a special kind of matcha that you're using? Because I was shopping for it and uh, there's a lot of options and I'm curious. Um, yeah, definitely. There's, um, so for this one, so set the plain one aside and then the other one we're going to mix the matcha into. And, um, so yeah, with matcha, I'm using culinary grade matcha and that's what you wanna use for baking. There's like ceremonial grade, which is more something that you, when you're, you're drinking matcha, it's a higher grade of matcha. But um, for, for this, I would just use culinary matcha because then it's for baking, it's for cooking with, and it's probably not gonna be quite as expensive as the ceremonial grade. Oh, good tip. So that's kind of how, you know, they're like, this is for cooking, so it's not gonna be quite the same. But Where did you get yours? Because I, I did not see anywhere that said culinary matcha. Really? What does yours say? Mine says, I mean, it just said, uh, it did say ceremonial. Oh, it did? Well, you mm -hmm. know, if you can only find that, then use that. You know, I just think if you have, if there is a culinary matcha, then, you know, go for that one. Mm -hmm. So um, we are going to put two tablespoons of this matcha in back into half of the batter that I just measured out. And I like this one because it's su such a pretty bright green color. Oh yeah, it's beautiful. And so this is gonna, you know, it's gonna add a lot of flavor, but it's also just like such a beautiful color in this cake. It yeah, I love this like cake. An earthy finish. This cake feels very um, holiday, but it's it's very it's but chic and cool because it's matcha. <laughs> Whoa! <laughs> it's just like. Blowing dust. Okay, so start it on low, lower. Mm -hmm. So while this is mixing, um, Audrey wants to know, what do we usually bake for the holidays together? Diana's usually doing all the baking and I'm doing all the eating. <laughs> Anna 
was just cleaning the kitchen and yelling at my mom. <laughs> I'm always doing the dishes. That's usually my role. And I, and, but I really want to be a better baker in 2021. That's my, that's my, cool. this, this, all this programming has been great. Cool. That's awesome. Okay. So um, now we have two bowls, right? We have two kinds of batter. We have the matcha one and we have the plain one. So um, can you tell us a little bit about the pan you're using? Yeah, sure. For the bun. Um, so this is a classic bunt pan and um, this was from also from Amazon that I got in and it's just like it's awesome it's so solid and heavy and it has a nice weight to it so um I'm really excited about using this yeah I so this thing saved my life yesterday because Diana's like did you grease it did you did you flour it enough and I was so worried because I thought I was going to stick to the pan but this thing is non-stick and so like just it's it is very thick and sturdy like it'll it'll, it's going to be in your kitchen for a while. And, um, we have that also on the class page, but it's, it's a really sturdy pan. Yeah. And I would say that, um, so yeah, let's talk about flouring the pan. This is pretty important. Um, I would have to say, even when I'm using something that's a nonstick, I always flour, I always butter and flour the pan and you can use a spray if you want, like a pan, or you can use um, coconut oil and just brush it on. That's like an easy way. But um, depending on your bud pan, if you have something that has really intricate designs, then it is really important to coat it completely. So I like to do this over my kitchen sink. Then after I butter it, I, um, I put like, you know, maybe two tablespoons of flour into it. And I go like this and I tap the whole thing and, and that's till it coats the pan. And then I dump the rest into the sink. So it's just like a little cleaner to do it that way. Mm -hmm. And you can make sure that like the whole thing is coated. So, um, yeah, so our pan is pretty much ready to go. So we have a bunt here. Um, I like to take like kind of just like two measuring spoons, anything that you're not using and use them to scoop in the batter here. And what else do I need? Oh, I use a chopstick sometimes. Okay. So we're going to um, show you guys how we do the swirl for this. Um, yeah, so, I thought this technique was very interesting. Okay, so we have two batters, right? And so this one is, you kind of want to keep it haphazard. And by that, I just mean like, so you're going to just pl start plopping in some of this batter. And I wouldn't worry about like coating the whole thing, getting it perfect, because you want these splotches of color into it. And then we're gonna swirl um, either a skewer or I'm using a chopstick. You're gonna just swirl through the whole thing. And yeah, there's, you know, keeping it haphazard is great. Yeah, it makes it more irregular splotches. And yeah. it's, like it's not, it doesn't need to be perfect. It's really, um, you just want blocks of color in it. And that's why I'm doing it this way. So for, the, for, for coating the pan, can you use gluten-free flour? Will it still? Yep, yep. I use the same, whatever flour I'm using. Yeah. And gluten-free works great for this. So yeah, I'm putting in splotches of the matcha batter. And obviously that's what's gonna give this cake a lot of color. So, you know, you just wanna stick it in here. Oh, I wish I watched this yesterday. I was like going like this and just like throwing it all in and, well, no, I'm sure it still turned out good. This is just, maybe when I say haphazard, it's like, it, maybe it's still not totally, you know? Mm -hmm. But um, you just want color blocks. So I like to like, you know, wherever I see green, I like to layer a little bit of the plain batter on top. And I think that helps like, you know, kind of helps the color come out better at the end. Um, but yeah, that's it. I'm almost done with this batter. I'm just gonna like put the rest of um, the batter in here. I know you can you can hear the wildlife in Ojai. It's it's oh, just so sweet. yeah you can just hear birds and I think it sounds like a cricket or a, a frog. I don't know. I think it's someone's car alarm. <laughs> <laughs> sure. But you know there is a lot of nature too. Donna's like it sounds so beautiful. I'm like I think someone's car is like getting broken into. Well, probably not. It's, it's definitely not in Ojai. <laughs> um, this is okay, great. So I'm on my last layer of adding the matcha to it. 
So this hey is Nick, we have Nick. Nick is here. Hey, oh my gosh, our friend Nick is he's such a great baker. He really is. I want to do it like a gingerbread house with him. Oh yeah, he's the he's a gingerbread. He's the he's made some crazy houses for sure. <laughs> um, so somebody asked, can you use the paddle? Did you use the paddle attachment or the whip attachment for um, whipping this batter? Um, I use the paddle attachment, which looks like. I didn't know what the paddle was before. It's this one, you can see. So um, this one's great, but you know, this cake also, like I said, it's foolproof. If you use the whisk attachment, that's fine too. Not everyone has like all the attachments, you know, so you can use whatever you have. But the paddle attachment's easier because you know how like chunks of butter get stuck in your whisk? So the, the paddle really helps you with that. Okay. Yeah, I've never used the paddle attachment, but now I'm starting to, because I've been seeing like, um, you know, Fanny Gerson, who she showed us how to make some conchas um, the other, the other day. And she just doesn't even use the whisk attachment. It's just only paddle. Yeah, because when you use the whisk, um, all the butter gets stuck in the wires and you're like trying to dig it out. The paddle just makes it a lot easier. Yeah. So I have these, you know, I have all my batter in here now. So the next thing I like to do is I, I'm using a chopstick. You can use just any kind of stick that you have and you're just gonna run through the batter. So I'm just doing kind of a figure eight, like swirl through it. And you wanna just run it through so that, you know, everything gets a little bit of color. And yeah, I'm just- For the color, can you, instead of matcha, could you use other colors to give you know, to mix it in? Have you played around with other flavors? I haven't, but um, I mean, if you're just doing color, you can use that pataya, you know, that dragon fruit powder. If you want like bright and magenta inside, that would be cool. I would say like for this recipe, if you want to play around with it, I would use something that is also a powder just so you don't mess up the ratio of the batter. So I think that using butterfly pea powder or, you know, if you just want like really fun colors, I would go with dragon fruit or the, um, or the, butterfly pea yeah does dragon fruit or butterfly they don't have taste really right so there's not really any kind of flavor component it, to this. It, i would say that most people use it for the color like you see it in bowls a lot and you know you can be like oh i made a gluten-free cake and it's you know it's like really colorful and you know i think people would be really into it too so we have someone tuning in from europe and they can't get gluten-free cup for cup flour that you had mentioned so what gluten-free flours can they use instead um, if you can, I'm trying to think, I would look up a recipe that has a ratio for you online because, um, you would, you can use a mix of flowers, but, um, I think it's better to follow a guide if you haven't done it before. And like I said, you're probably going to have to add xanthan gum to it. And that's, what's going to give it that, um, bouncy, you know, that, that kind of stretchiness that we're used to seeing in baked goods. So yeah, I would, I've done rice flour pretty successfully with something like this. Um, I think rice flour would work, work pretty well. Yeah, it is. It gives you that, that nice bouncy texture. Um, so, some, so this is actually a question I had because I had some folks ask, if you don't have a bump pan and you just have like your traditional loaf pan, yep. um, could you do yeah. this? Yeah, I actually, originally I developed this recipe in a nine, nine by five loaf pan, like a classic loaf pan. And I would say you can do the exact same thing in it but um, just don't fill it so high. So this has a little more batter than that. I would leave like, let's just say I would leave like two, one to two inches from the top. So you might have a little leftover batter, but you can really just bake it, bake it off in a you know muffin tin or something if you want. Yeah, great, great, great tip. If you um, pull this up so you can see, like you can yes. see after I, you know, ran the chopstick through it, it really got my swirls. And this is like ready to go into the oven. Oh, and, um, Someone also asked, were we able to find butterfly pea flour? I mean, uh, yeah, the powder and the pitaya powder. Um, you can buy it online, like Amazon again, they sell it. Like I've been living pretty remote. So a lot of things that I used to buy at a health food store, which um, I think Ojai would have it. But, you know, if you're living somewhere a little more remote, just look online and you'll be able to find like culinary matcha powder. Um, you pataya powder, butterfly pea. There's a, uh, I think a company called Suncor Foods and they make all that stuff. So it's pretty oh, great. cool. Great. Well, so this goes in the oven. What's the temperature? Yeah. After this is ready, you're just going to, I would, 
I would advise um, when you're working with a bunt pan just to make it, you know, if you're checking on it, um, it's a lot easier to then put this on a baking sheet and then put the whole thing in the oven in the middle rack um, at 350. And it bakes for, for me, it took exactly one hour, but I would say between 60 and 70 minutes. And you'll know it's done when it starts to, it'll start to have a really nice crust on the outside. And this one kind of puckers up a little bit at the top. Mm -hmm. And um, you'll see a little bit browning on the edges. And then you can take a skewer or toothpick and poke through. And as long as it's, um, you know, not sticking, then you know it's good. Oh, great. Um, so yeah, I, I did the same thing yesterday and it took, mine took exactly an hour as well. Yeah. So I think it, it works pretty well. And, um, yeah, you just want to get a nice crust on it. And I've, okay. So I also want to, um, address, I think I've had people ask me, Hey, what if I don't want to use cane sugar for this? Like, mm -hmm. you know, people that are super healthy, I would say that, um, so someone asked, could they use coconut sugar? And you could, but um, the only thing is a big part of this is keeping that batter light and using a coconut sugar or, you know, alt sugar sometimes darkens the batter. So you would have like a deep brown color with the matcha. So it's kind of up to you. You can use any sweetener. Um, and then if you want to use other alt sugars, I would say this recipe's only been tested for cane sugar and it gives you this nice brown crust when your cake comes out, which comes from sugar. So um, you can also reduce the sugar a little bit. If we are at, I think one and a quarter cup, you could you could bring it down to a cup, but uh, maybe less than that, it, I don't know if I'd consider it dessert myself. <laughs> and, and agave honey, that's a little bit too runny. You don't wanna add moisture to the cake, right? Yeah, I wouldn't use that for this cake. It might work for something else. You'd have to experiment with it. You can definitely try those things. It just, I think that using sugar, like a dry, you know, sugar, coconut sugar, um, those will yield the best results. Awesome. Well, I think we're going to move on to the decorating part. So I know um, Dinah has one baked off and it is on, there, she, there it is. Oh my gosh, so pretty. Okay, hey, so we have this one, this one um, I had done ahead. And like I said, um, it gets just a really nice crust on it. Like it's just beautiful and brown and that's kind of how you want to look. Um, and yeah, I'm going to make an icing for it. Um, actually, I'm gonna go grab it real quick. So <laughs> I'm gonna go grab mine now. Um, I, Cause I wanna be part of this decorating part cause I feel like this is what I, where I need a lot of help as well. <laughs> Okay, so we're just gonna make a really simple icing. This is um, using confectioner sugar. And um, so I have confectioner sugar here. I put a pinch of salt and I like using just lemon juice for this. Um, so I'm gonna add, you know, about two teaspoons of lemon juice. I like my, you know, I like my icing tart and refreshing. So these are lemons from mom's garden actually. Oh, nice. So they're like, my mom has this, amazing tree of Meyer lemons and it's like I think every I think the whole the whole neighborhood knows about it because we always catch them taking lemons all the time my mom got really mad though because we had a new neighbor and he was just greedy and so she put a sign <laughs> on a cardboard box saying do not take lemons and oh, oh really yeah it was so funny oh my gosh That's funny. so I was making this and I was like, this icing, I'm like, whoa, this is a lot of sugar. Cause I'm, I'm like, there's not enough liquid to make this into icing, but it did after like mixing it a bit. Actually mine's a little runny. I'm gonna um, grab a little more confectioner sugar. Yeah, so I I just, I think that what I love about buns is the runny icing that they put on top of it. And um, that's what, yeah, this, this, this recipe is. And um, it's a great, you know, you could decorate on top of it. And I'm excited. And that's what Dinah did with um, the cake yesterday. I'm sure you've seen on Instagram. Um, and so you're adding a little bit of powdered sugar just to thicken yeah. it. So I probably added a little too much lemon juice to this, but you know, it's okay. You're just really eyeballing it. So I added more um, confectioner sugar back in and you just want it to be, you want it to be thick, but horrible. Is this, is this too runny? Um, that's a little bit. Yeah, a little yeah. bit. Just a little you, bit. You, yeah, I would add a little more. And yeah, it's really forgiving. 
Um, and this is kind of, um, I like to do it right before because it's going to act almost like a glue to our toppings. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's a, it's like a nice glue, um, but it's just so beautiful when it pulls. It's, delicious. it's like a tastier glue. It's a tastier glue, exactly. Um, Debbie Uchi wants to know where you're tuning in from. Diana, where are you? Oh, I am um, in Ojai, California. I just moved here, I want to say like a month ago. And yeah, Diana's very new there and she's still figuring out um, her people there. So those of you who are in Ojai are tuning in from Ojai. Yeah, if you have um, all over, you guys should connect. Find cake, so. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I added more powdered sugar to mine, so it should be less runny. All right. Is this still? Oh, yeah, that's good. Yeah, like, so you want to be, you know, a little thicker. Here's mine. Oh, um, nice. And then I like to, um, so this is what really helps is I like to um, put this into a pourable, like a little pourable pitcher. Um, if you have something like that with a spout or measuring. I find something this little bit. Or like a measuring cup. So I'm going to stick all of the frosting that I just made into it. And yeah, it's going to help you when you're putting on the icing. Like what I like about this recipe is like, you know, you don't have to use spatulas or anything like that. You're really just um, pouring it straight onto the cake. Um, and so you have your cake, right? And do you have yours on a plate, Donna? I do, and I love your cake stand, by the way. I This is I a think, new gift for me on that I love. I'm so excited about it. That's a good one. I feel like you're such a, you're a good online shopper. Um, and I want to let folks know that, um, you know, we're going to pick a lucky winner today to win $250 from Amazon. So all these things you could totally, you could totally buy. So we'll announce that later. Okay. Yeah, sounds great. So now we have all of this, you know, this nice um, glaze in a pitcher. And so, okay, so you're going to have one, I like to put one hand on the plate or under it so you can spin it. Yep, that's great. So um, I like to start from kind of the center, so the center of it, and you're just going to drizzle it like this, and it'll let gravity, you know, do its work. It'll start to, you see it starting to pour into the center by itself. And then I just keep going. So now I'm going on the outside a little bit and letting it drip the other way. And yeah, if you follow my recipe, you should have enough glaze to, you know, do the top. And uh, yeah, just let it drip. And yeah, this is an easy way to do it without having to, you know, use a spatula or anything. Kind of just like let it Drip down the sides. Um, is yours working, Donna? It's, it is working. I was like, I was very scared for this moment, but it is totally doing its thing. You have a phobia of baking. I do. I do. Diana, you know, it's, not, it's really not as, it's just about patience, you know? It's not like, and everyone's just so happy because there's sugar that, like, it's going to be a success. So do we just pour all of it in? I mean, use as much as you need. You know, you just want to give um, give your cake a good base. Mm -hmm. I could have probably made a little extra, but I think this is nice. Okay. So what was so fun about your recipe is you've been really into drying fruit lately. So can you tell us a little bit how you made those beautiful bowl of dried fruits? Yeah, sure. So um, let me stick this aside for a second. So I have all this dried fruit here and, um, you know, it's like kind of like what you see at the supermarket, but you're making on your own. So it's really nice. Um, so I like to actually what dry the best is I found citrus. Like, look at how pretty this um, pink grapefruit is. Oh, it's gorgeous. And did you use a dehydrator for that? Yes, I did. So I like to slice everything really thin. I like to keep the core because I think it's really pretty. And um, yeah, I put it into the dehydrator for about, I would say it took about 
four hours or so. Mm -hmm. And the apple. Are you using a mandolin, a mandolin to, yeah. to get at that? I'm cutting it by hand. Oh, wow. Mandolin would be too thin. Um, you can use a mandolin for some things if it fits on there and you think it's easier, but imagine like um, a citrus, it's too squishy for a man. It's too moist. Like you can't, you can't do that on a mandolin. That's but true. Like an apple, if you had really small apples, you could do that. Um, the important thing about apples and pears, if you're drying those, um, you want to just soak it in a bit of lemon juice and water before. So it stays like, see how mine's not too brown. Like it just keeps the flesh really nice. So um, yeah, anything that you think normally browns, I would um, I would just add a little lemon juice, let that soak. But I also did lemons and that turned out really cute. Like, oh gosh, yeah. like how citrus, um, the peel of the citrus adds a little bitterness that makes it really nice. Ooh, and you can, and, and obviously you can eat all these. Yeah, and then you have any leftover, you can actually use this for garlands too. Like, you know, if you have blood oranges, like, you know, people make garlands at home. You can actually use the dry fruit for that too. This is a real reef we're making here. Yeah. Okay. So now we have, um, you know, we have our, we have all of our icing on here and let me grab, I also, do you want to grab all your decorating? Um, yes, I have it all here on the side. So I wasn't, didn't have a hydrator and I didn't have time to, and Audrey wanted to know, can you do this all in the oven as well? The deep, the yes, deep. Yes, you can actually. Um, I am trying to think. Yeah, I would do the do it in the oven on a really low temperature, like 170 to 200, and you can just spread all your fruit onto um, parchment lined baking sheets. And I crack the oven open a little bit, and you're just kind of letting it slowly dry. And you can just check on it. But yeah, the oven works too. It's just I think a little bit slower than the dehydrator. Oh, I see. I see. Yeah, I, I've been seeing that um, trend lately. People have been doing a lot of DIYs on how to um, dry and dry it in the oven. So Audrey, I know there's a lot of resources online. Um, yeah, so we have, okay, so I have my dry fruit here and I also picked some um, pink peppercorns for my neighborhood. And I think anything, if you do have a garden, it's great, but you can, um, you know, you can use all these little pretty sprigs to garnish with. Like, you know, I even think um, if you don't have access to something like this, you could use sage, rosemary, bay leaves, um, stuff that you find at the grocery store would work too. Um, but anything branchy and pretty is nice. Um, so yeah, let's start decorating. Oh yeah, let's see your, Donna, yours looks great. Right? It's not bad, right? Good job. Um, so I actually, well, I found, so I went to, you know, I was at Whole Foods and I was able to find like dried pineapples. And I know you gave me some tips on how to decorate using these. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna tr try with, with these. And I was able to find these peppercorns actually. Like it was in a bouquet. You know what, those are, did you know those are edible? Like the whole, our the whole life, like, like those are just out there all over California getting on the sidewalks and you can eat them. Yeah. They have a fruity, peppery, like heat. It's really nice. Um, okay, so yeah, let's start decorating. So what I like to do is I like to take, um, I guess anything that's the bigger fruit and I just sort of start on one edge. So any bigger pieces just start to, you know, have them on one side and you can go all the way around or you can, um, you know, make it more asymmetrical if that's the kind of like look that you like. Um, I'm going to use some of my oranges and other things that I've dried, but yeah, you're just going to start to layer it. Um, so I'll do like, you know, I'll have a cluster here and then you can use like stuff that's a little smaller. And ooh, actually I'm going to grab my cranberries real quick. I'll be right back. Sorry. So Dinah gave me a great tip for mine because I'm using these pineapples to do a dusting of green, like of matcha powder to just give it some color so it pops. So I'm attempting to do that, but I, I did dust some, some matcha on here. So I'm just gonna lay some out here. And, oh, you have, yeah, you can, if you don't have much color, you can um, use a little sieve and do matcha on it. Mm -hmm. um, I'm gonna add some cranberries because I think that gives it really nice color. And, you know, just kind of have them wherever on here. And what else do I have? I have some, some persimmons that I dried. 
And I like persimmons, like things that look like this kind of look like flower petals. So they're really pretty. And, and that's from mom's garden too, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> My mom has a, a bounty of fruit. She doesn't, the backyard doesn't really have many flowers. It's, it's always about things you can eat. So it has, they're all, we have so many fruit trees. We have persimmons, we got guavas and grapefruits and yeah. it's not edible my parents are not interested <laughs> exactly so yeah let's like so I have kind of like like a cluster here and let's just start adding other stuff to it like leaves and things and um yeah this is fun it's kind of like you're making an edible floral arrangement um yeah I like to add little sprigs And what I like about using dried, more mostly dried fruit is that you can, um, you can make this ahead and it can sit for a while. It can just sit on your counter. Like, whereas if you were using um, fresh fruit, you know, you can't really just let that sit out for so long. So yeah, I think using, I think using dried fruit is really cool. It could be such a pretty thing to sit on like, you know, on the dining room table on Christmas day or something. Yeah, totally. And um I think these pink peppercorns are so pretty. So yeah, you just want to, you know, instead of it looking all circ like all perfect, it's just nice to have like little sprigs of, you know, branchy bits everywhere. And that makes it feel a little more natural. Mm -hmm. um, and Donna has done flor flowers too. So I think hers will turn out really pretty. It's been a while, but I do love um, flowering, doing, working with flowers. Um, oh, Carrie has some great, she was asking some photography advice. Oh, photography. What's the question? Just any advice on how to make your food look beautiful? Um, I'm trying to think. Well, if you are, you know, just using your phone, I would say it's nice to have just natural light. Um, right now we are using, um, we are using some light here so that you can see better. But um, yeah, if you're just going to take a photo of this, like, you know, work in front of a window, like, you know, overcast, like soft light is actually perfect. And um, I'm trying to think what else just yeah, like, you know, have fun with it. And um, I think that's what makes it so nice is that we all have a phone now. So we're all able to take beautiful photos. I think. I know it's it's true. Um, let's see what else. Some more stuff to it. Donna, how's yours looking? You know, I wish I had more dried fruit. It's kind of looking. Oh, because yours is just pineapples. <laughs> and I feel like my things aren't as delicate as yours, like the, the you know, all like the, the leaves that you're using. Mine are a little bit more clunky. So I'm trying to take off some leaves. Yeah, you know, I always just have like little scissors and that helps like kind of lay everything down and then you can um, just cut away at it. I think that's an easier way to work. So um, another question is, how do you serve this without ruining how pretty it is? You're gonna have to, <laughs> well, you're gonna have to cut into it. I don't, uh, I'm trying to think, I mean, you know, like everyone sees it, you can keep it on the pedestal for most of the day and then people can enjoy looking at it you know, as if it's a floral arrangement. And then when you're ready to serve it, then you're going to take off the leafy bits, but the rest is edible. So um, what's great about a bun is like the servings are here for you. So you can just, you know, you can cut out wedges pretty easily and, and it'll still keep nice shape. Like when I cut into a wedge of this and pull it out, you'll still have like a really beautiful ring. This was such a great thing at our, um, during Thanksgiving, someone mentioned with their turkey, they do a victory lap. So maybe even <laughs> take it around your guests like I'm about to cut this everyone oh one last yeah. look and do a victory oh. lap. like yeah you can show it to everyone and they're like okay good for you and then <laughs> <laughs> all right great good for you our parents are so used to it now they're just like okay like can we just eat it now or I know I know my parents all are right. so old. Like, yeah they're just so used to it they're not really like they're not wowed anymore. Uh, mine's getting fuller. Like, actually, I think I'm gonna just keep going and wrap it all around. I think that looks really nice. Um, but yeah, you just kind of, it's like making a floral arrangement that you get to 
eat afterwards. So I feel like that's like the best part. Um, and yeah, like you said, if you have you know, like these peppercorn um, leaves and trees, like I picked this because I thought that the leaf was like nice and delicate. And you know, when I put it on, you can still see the things under it. And I'm trying to think, yeah, just kind of give it a layer. And yeah, you're just building layers. And we should use like a wreath. Yeah, it's like a, it's a, it's a, like a, yeah, but it's not necessarily so, um, it's not like you're using mistletoe. And I mean, I think rosemary's nice, but I also think like, oh, maybe there's something growing in your yard that you can use, like that you hadn't really thought about that way before. Like, I think that's a cool way to look at ingredients. What else can I add? This is too big. But um, yeah, um, well, Ojai has these amazing, um, they're called pixies and they're the really small oranges. So I dried some of those and those are like perfect for this. <gasps> you did? So yeah, Ojai is known for these, this oh, orange cool. variety. And they're, yeah. so, they're, they're really tiny, but they're called pixies and they're so sweet. The sweetest, the sweetest thing in it. And it's so sweet when you go to like, um, I remember I stayed at a, at a, at an inn there and they like had at the front desk. They always have them everywhere and people yeah, so cute and I don't think they sell them anywhere they're just so small and um so anything that's small like this is great because or you know I bet you could use um the ones that are easy to find called cuties you know the ones that are oh, yeah brands. cuties they're like in, in, the, in the bag I would suggest like really small ones and it's cool because with citrus it um it when it dries it feels like stained glass like I think I've done this with blood orange too and it really it keeps the color and I think the bitterness really helps to counterbalance the sweetness of the cake. And for, yeah, for those of you who don't know, Diana is a food style. So she's doing this for a living and is styling on set all the time. And it's really fun to see her in action. Yeah, it's fun. And I'm building this, I'm actually, I'm building a photo studio out here and I'm actually doing photography too, so. So I'm, I'm for hire, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> Those of you who need food photos, my sister okay, is. So this is a really nice cluster. And yeah, you just kind of want to like, I really love the pink peppercorns in this. And mine is almost, I don't know what else it needs. Maybe something right here. Um, also, for those of you who want to see more of Dinah's work, you can follow her on Instagram, which is Jewels of NY. And I think, oh, and we had picked a winner for today's. Wow. Team. So let's see who did we choose. Exciting. I so know. To get all this stuff. <laughs> and they can, they can shop all the things that they see today. And the winner is Alexandra Holbrook. Alexandra, we're going to ping you after this and um, send you the code for your gift card. Congratulations, that's so exciting. So Dinah, how do we know when it's done? You're done playing around and it's ready. It just feels done to you, you know? Like, <laughs> there's no, um, like, I don't know, let me hold this up. You can see it from the top, but also maybe I should show it um, more from this way. Um, but yeah, you can see there's just a ring around the top and like to me this looks pretty, um, you know, I don't like to go too heavy handed on things. So for me this is like, looks pretty good. It's pretty filled in. You could, you could do it more asymmetrical if you wanted to, I think. Like if you have really Ricky, cool friends. Ricky, Ricky keeps asking me, Donna, let's see your kick. I'm like, all right, Ricky, I'm going to try. It's still a work in progress. <laughs> it looks festive. It's festive <laughs> rings. It looks good from the side. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's getting there. It's getting I, there. <laughs> I need to go forage some more here in Brentwood, Los Angeles, and see if I can find some more peppercorns and eucalyptus. Um, yeah, I think that if you had uh, cranberries, like just fresh cranberries, like they're just going to give a pop of color. So that would be nice. Be careful when you forage. I know, Carrie, I have to be careful. <laughs> 
If I think if, I mean, if you all are following or have seen the photo, when you slice in this, it should just be a gorgeous stripe of matcha. Why don't I cut into it just so everyone can kind of see what it looks like? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Look at your little tiny scissors. Everything I have is tiny. So like, yeah, if you're gonna serve this, you know, you're gonna have to cut into it. But let's take it corner, that's easy. You're right, the bunt just perfectly segments like a, a slice for somebody. Awesome, it just makes it easy if you're serving this. All right, I'm just gonna use my hands, but it should be nice and colorful inside. There you go. Can you see it? Ooh, yeah, and it looks really moist. Yeah, it is. It has a nice swirl that's going through it. Um, yeah, it has a great crumb. And I think, yeah, if you've never done gluten-free baking, this is a great place to start. It's no fuss. It's gonna come out good no matter what, pretty much. Uh -huh. But you get really nice color inside and then you're gonna just get really nice earthy flavors from the matcha. And yeah, I highly suggest using dried citrus because that um, that bitterness really counterbalances the matcha. It's really nice. And my my house smelled so amazing last night when I was baking this. I'm like, this is gonna taste good. Um, so things off the because oh, the other thing I forgot to mention that when you do bake it in a butt pan, sometimes it tends to pucker up a little bit. So I like to take like a paring knife or just a small knife and kind of trim off the top before you do the flip onto a platter. Got it. Yeah, trim it so it's nice yeah. and easy. And then you get to eat the scraps so though. Really I know that's the best part is eating the scraps. Well, thank you, Diana. This was so much fun. I feel like you're, you know, this is the first time we've ever done anything like this together. So I'm so happy you can join us. And you, these are just, I mean, everything is just beautiful, of course. And again, folks, if you want to, you know, all Dinah's like picks from Amazon are all on the class page. Amazon Home, they've been so generous and been able to make all this programming free. Can we say one last goodbye to Cleo the bunny? Oh, okay. Let me, she's such a trouble. I'm still mad at her for earlier. I like bought a mic thinking I was professional. She ate it before I got into it. So let me find it's her. It's just like spaghetti for Cleo. I remember I got like these fancy headphones and I was just like listening in my room and all of a sudden like, what happened? And I see Cleo have like bitten into it, like from below. I was like, Cleo, and she's, I mean, she's just nonstop loving. She loves Apple products, especially. Oh, there's Cleo. <laughs> Cleo has an Instagram too, everybody. So follow Cleo the bunny if you, if you haven't already. Um, she's, she's the most fabulous bunny. She's a troublemaker, but she's enjoying her life out here. Well, I'm so happy you guys are both loving Ojai. You seem so happy there and we love your kitchen. Thank you for joining us. Thank you everyone for tuning in. I, I, I saw so many familiar friends in, uh, in this chat. So thank you so much for, for seeing it, for coming guys. I, it was really nice to see you all. Thanks for having us. Bye Diana.